Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of A Handful of Hope. I am so happy and grateful to have returning with us today, Anne-Marie Smith, who's passionate about creating a life of her dreams and spent years researching the blueprints of success. She knew there is more to life than just existing. She knew that with the right tools, she could learn to intentionally create a life that would matter and make a difference in the world. And with an abundance of financial resources, she could serve the needs of others as well as her own. She's the CEO of several companies with over 600 employees. After spending over two decades working as a teacher and administrator, developing educational programs for her community, she learned what truly drives people and how to bring out the best in her teams. She has mastered how to connect with people in a way that brings out the best in them and teaches them how to become servant leaders that bring out the best in their teams. Anne-Marie, welcome and thank you so very much for being here. Oh my goodness, it's my treat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, so this is going to be a little bit different today because since we last chatted, we have, you know, we've been going through this whole time in COVID and you have assembled a group of people together to write a book. So first of all, I want to say you have a publishing company. So maybe you can start with just explaining the publishing company, the journey to it, and then we'll get into the book. Okay, so this all started with a desire to give my children and my niece an opportunity to give back i grew up with parents who were very adamant that we serve our community and we do for others so with crazy schedules i wanted to create a company where my children could give back so we came up with the name crazy amazing and trademarked that and that was that was really fun to work with them and create a company whose mission is really to inspire other people to live at their best level. Um, then I realized, boy, we would have so much more control if we owned our own publishing company. So we uh, started Fun Bunch Publishing. And uh, when, yeah, when my husband and I first met, uh, he has two children from a former marriage and he would Whenever we were going somewhere, he would say, come on, Fun Bunch, let's go. So for 20 some years now, Fun Bunch has been our tag or hashtag, if you would. So I figured, you know, I want my children and my, you know, my family to have an opportunity to publish, write books, and we publish them. So that's how Fun Bunch Publishing came about. And uh, it's our goal that down the line, we help aspiring authors, people with amazing stories who want to write a book, the opportunity to be able to do that with us. Fun Bunch Publishing. God, that just sounds like such a fun name. I absolutely love it. And so you, you, you put together Fun Bunch Publishing. It's a beautiful way to help empower your kids to give back. And now through everything with COVID, you had the idea of using that publishing company to assemble basically a group of authors to put together a book to provide help support for everybody going through this time during COVID, the people who are struggling or people who are wanting to elevate and, and raise the, the standard in whatever way they've been living life. And it's kind of a collection of, of the human experience. So go ahead and tell us a little bit about your reason why behind that. What, what inspired you for the book? And then, maybe the journey to that piece. So, you know, during COVID, um, definitely a life-changing experience and something that, you know, my generation has never experienced. And watching, you know, or reading social media and seeing, you know, the different extremes. Some people are making the best of it and others are struggling. Um, those who struggle with mental health issues are struggling. And I thought, boy, what could we do? Um, what could we write that would hopefully inspire people and show them that there are people that, you know, are getting through this. So I took, you know, what we were doing, first of all. Um, I had my kids write thank you letters to people and during their downtime or when they would, you know, say I'm bored, um, let's start writing some thank you cards. So to the postman, to the uh, person at the market, to the drive-through person, just hand them a thank you note. Thank you for your service. Um, we really appreciate it. 
And um, then we got involved in giving food to the shut-ins. So we have a foundation. We collected um, and purchased a lot of food. We have a restaurant, so we're able to get food at lower prices. And we started just throwing out on social media, who in this community needs food? My kids would separate the food. We'd put it in boxes. Then we'd have some of our employees who um, are still working with us go out there and deliver it. And it was it was just a really fun experience. One to teach my kids that they're very blessed and having the resources that they've grown up with um, almost makes them responsible for being of service to their community and making a mm. difference. So that's kind of how we started with, you know, coping with being under home quarantine. How could we be of service to others? What could we do for others? Uh, for our family, I do a weekly um, food order, you know, and I just divide up the food and drop off a package to my parents, to my brother, to my sister, um, to my husband's family. And how do we, how do we, you know, give them something that maybe they didn't have access, especially at the beginning when toilet paper and paper towels and disinfectants were hard to get. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, always make sure we have plenty of toilet paper and plenty of toilet papers pre-COVID. So I had enough to supply everybody with, you know, a few weeks worth. Um, but our mindset here at home was, okay, this is a situation. How do we be of service? What can mm -hmm. we do? So. My daughter started doing a, a, a video chat, took all of her friends from high school, and every day she would do something to make them laugh. And it was pretty funny because she'd be like, it's four o'clock, mom, I got to do something to make them laugh. So it, it was just crazy things, you know, trying a new recipe or um, jumping in the pool backwards or, you know, just anything to make them laugh. So her way of filling her time was preparing to do things to make her friends laugh. Um, so, you know, as a family, we looked at, this is where we're at. We have a choice. We could mope and say we're bored and we're, we have to wear a mask and we're mad. Or we could say, wow, you know what? We've got time now to be of service. So what's that going to look like? I love that. I love that your daughter frames that as I need to go do something to make people laugh. Yeah. That's incredible. So you, you have this mindset and it's, it's incredible that it's as a family and it's okay. This is the situation. Here are our choices and the choice that seems the most in alignment with who we are as a family and in alignment with our familiar values is how can we be of service to others? And one of the ways that you decided to be of service of others is through this book that's going to come out in September. Yeah. And I want you to tell us a little bit about the book, what your, what your intention is behind it, what the motivation is, and then, and, and all that good stuff. So crazy amazing is our franchise, if you would. So um, I, I started looking at what could we do to, how, what people are out there that are doing some fun, amazing things, crazy, amazing things. How are they coping during this time? And would they be willing to write their story, what they're doing? And we compile it into a book. So I, I reached out to people that I really admired. Um, one of them is Judge John Kralik. He wrote A Simple Act of Gratitude. And that book was just a phenomenal book. It's about writing thank you notes and he went on a journey to write 365 thank you notes and um i reached out to him and he, came, he answered and since then i i've shared with him what i wanted to do he loved the project he said i'm all in uh, then i i went out to um people i met you and said hey would you like to you're doing something phenomenal would you put that in a story form and donate a chapter to this book. Uh, my niece is a doctor. 
I said, Britt, what are you doing to get you through being on the front lines? And what are you doing to stay happy? Um, uh, Jocelyn, who is my right hand, what are you doing to make a difference? How are you crazy amazing during this time? And everybody, I think we're up to 17 authors right now. Mm -hmm. So I said, if we title it, How to Be Crazy Amazing During Difficult Times, it really is a book of hope. It's a book of um, giving people some ideas of what to do if you're stuck. Um, and, you know, I have this phenomenal compilation of people that I said, I don't want to make a dime off this book. I want it to be uh, an ebook that's easily accessible. Uh, and then I had, you know, some of my circle of friends say, but I'd like a hard copy version or, you know, a book, an actual book. So we've all decided that we'll post it uh, on Amazon and uh, all of the proceeds, 100% of the proceeds uh, will go to charities of our choice. So each of the authors get to choose what's their, what they're passionate about and give that money to um, charities and people who are already making a difference. So it's really come to life. Uh, I expected, you know, maybe we'll get five authors and that would be fun. And I had to really stop like taking authors because people heard about it and they're like, can we, can we add a chapter? So I said, that, that'll be the second book. That'll be, you know, how to be, you know, crazy, amazing, or um, <laughs> even more crazy, amazing, even more difficult times. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So, and, and my, you know, crazy, amazing um, started off with, when you look at something that's amazing, I actually wrote it down here. You're 1%, um, more like it's just it's astonishing someone who's amazing is just wow and then you add crazy to that um which means to an even greater degree now you've got astonishing at a greater degree and it really just takes that one little degree that one little push more to get to that crazy amazing level and when we're living through difficult times, it's getting out of your um, comfort zone, your habit, your routine, and saying, what can I do that will make a difference for somebody else? And it doesn't cost any money. If you don't have money to buy little note cards, pick up the telephone book and just call somebody. Pick up your, open up your email and just say, hi, I was thinking about you. And I just want you to know that I love you. Hmm. that's free. If we picked one person a day that we could do that and then come back around and do something, you never know the impact that's going to have on somebody that maybe is contemplating suicide, maybe is feeling alone and that nobody cares. So our, our heart's mission is to have a little bit of a, a guidebook, if you would, on what are some things that people are doing that work that you might want to try. I have to tell you, before we start chatting today, the CDC had just published a report and they're finally starting to cite some of the mental health fallout from COVID. And this was just for the United States, but it said something like over 40% of Americans have reported struggling with some sort of COVID. And you have that 40%, 11% of the United States population has strongly considered suicide in the last five months. So in a country of 400 million, that's roughly 40 to 44 million people have been strongly considering taking their life. And I say that because this mental health piece is, is, is completely real. And it's going to be, I think, far longer and lasting than COVID. And what I appreciate so much about the book and just the first draft I saw of it was it wasn't just a, a guide for COVID going through it. It was really a, a how-to guide for any time. Right. And it was, and it was covered such a beautiful spectrum of life where there's some folks on there who have done some really incredible, crazy, amazing things who are doing some really incredible, crazy, amazing things. And there, I, when I was flipping through the pages, or I guess I was actually scrolling through the pages because it's a digital, every page on it had almost some sort of blueprint. And it was a blueprint for it was either starting a business or launching a podcast or, or, or mending a relationship or looking at just how you could better self or a blueprint for how you could demonstrate empathy and compassion for another. 
how you could listen more intently with your your loved ones and it, it's i think it's such a, a wonderful resource to have that this could really be just an incredible reference guide for folks to take not just during this time but really through every time and so while you may be using it to go through difficult times it will serve you massively to enter into thriving times too right right and you know one of the things that i've I've researched for years, um, I have a master's degree in human development, um, that, you know, take aside the, the chemical imbalance or the, um, you know, mental illness that is just either genetically or that, that you just have. Um, for the others, the fastest way to get out of that funk is to focus on others because Depression is a lot about how the world affects you. Yes. And if you've ever talked to somebody that isn't clinically depressed, but just feeling those, everything is about how things affect them. I'm tired. They treat me mean. I don't get this. Everybody's, um, uh, you know, mean to me, whatever that was, it, it, what is, what it is. Uh, but the minute you shift and you take the focus off you, and you start focusing on others, it, it just changes you. It feels so good to do for, for others, especially when you don't expect anything in return. But when you get in the habit, you know, Judge John Kralik in his book, um, Simple Act of Gratitude, um, I did it and I still do it. My mom lives by it. She sends thank you cards out religiously. Mm. Um, and she is one of the happiest people I know. But when you're in a funk and you're feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm tired. Uh, you know, I, I don't have as many employees anymore. We don't have the contracts coming in. But you sit down and you write a thank you card to somebody who did something nice to you. Feels good. When you, you know, I give a thank you card to my pull man, who's just the sweetest man in the world. And when he tells me, I still have this thank you card. I keep it in my truck. You gave it to me three years ago. Like, mm. wow, that, that just naturally makes you happy. So the intent of the book is to help people get through difficult times by shifting the focus onto somebody else. And, you know, non-COVID times, I would tell people, go buy a Pillsbury roll of cookies. I don't know how much they are now, $2.50. Make cookies for somebody. Go to the local convalescent home make cookies and pass them out to people. There's so much joy in doing that. Um, in my younger years, I used to spend a lot of time at a, a convalescent home down the street, just reading to them. I would go there and at first it was one or two. And then all of a sudden I had the whole cafeteria filled and I would ask them, what do you want? To, what do you want me to read to you? Hmm. And, you know, we would, we'd have a great time and it felt so good. Every time I left there, I felt like, wow. And I really didn't do anything that cost money, but it took the shift away from what I was feeling um, and transferred some good things onto other people. Henry, I just, I want to step away from the book for one second, then we're going to come right back to it. But something you said, and I'm wildly curious, what is the most, or is there one that stands out the most for you of something you did for another, an act of service, a, a a gesture, a kind gesture, something you did for another that really stood out for you or was maybe like a, wow, this is powerful type moment or experience? Wow. I think, you know, one of my, my, my whys um, was to be able to give my mom and dad a life that, you know, they wouldn't have been able to have on their own. Um, my mom made a lot of sacrifices as an immigrant to this country, becoming a citizen, but having the dream that her kids would have an amazing life. So my mom always wanted a house where she could look out her kitchen window as she washed dishes and see her beautiful garden. So, um, and she never had that, you know, her kitchens always were like in the middle of the house and no window. So about, maybe seven years ago, um, I put them both in my, in a, my car. I had purchased a house for them and uh, I 
drove him to it. And I said, Hey, you know, can you come and look at this house for me? I'm kind of just curious about what it looks like. They didn't know I had already bought it and owned it. So I take him in, look at it. My mom fell in love with the kitchen window and I knew she mm. would. It, it was perfect. Beautiful street. Uh, the look on their face when I gave them their, the keys to their house. I mean, it, it still like just warms my heart. That was the best feeling in the world. Um, they had no more mortgage to this day. Um, I've since moved them and built a custom home for them. And that's been fun too. But that was one of the moments that it, it was like, wow, I, I, I get to thank you in a little way. You, you no longer have any financial worries. You don't have to worry about a house payment. And that, that just, that, that's always still warm to my heart. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I, you and I share the same dream. That's been long my, my probably biggest dream for myself yeah. is to do that for my mom. And I, that's incredible. Thank you. Yeah. And, and you know, other things are, um, there's a homeless woman in our community and she has a post office box where I have mine. And every month I stick $200 in her box. She has no idea it's me. We cross on the street and I always tell her, thank you for smiling. You make me smile when you smile. Uh, that's the fun part. And that's, that's the crazy, amazing piece that when you operate from that level, your life is magical because mm -hmm. you don't, you, you have the means to give and you give because you can and you expect nothing in return. And you could be like a secret Santa Claus. Just people never know you do these things for them. Um, I've sent people on vacations and have no idea that it was me that sent them there. Um, I've bought cars for people. Um, you know, it's, it's, you just, there's a good feeling inside um, that, that just comes from, I, I, I'm able to share the wealth I have and I, I do this because I can. You know, I think that's a good segue back to the book because it is so true. A couple Saturdays ago, you had a group of the authors. We all got together. And I think there was about maybe eight or nine of us on the call. And it was the first time we'd all gotten to be together. And what was so remarkable about that call was the level of enthusiasm for the group when it became the discussion of, okay, we're, we know we're giving this away. But then we can also offer a sell hard copy that all goes to charity. And it was just wonderful to see the, the excitement level up because what ended up happening with that is it became a way to take this, this thing that everybody contributed to. And now it could give twofold. It could give in a free version for anybody who needs it. They could have the free version. But then also anybody who wanted to get some sort of physical copy, they can do it. And then all of a sudden you start to see this whole other side of the authors as people start to talk about charities and causes they're passionate about. And, and you get to see these different dynamics. And, and then it becomes another way where the authors can then give to this other organization that they really love. So it's, 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 it's amazing to see that because you see how the dominoes start to fall where there's even when you give, then there ends up being even more ways you can give. Right, right. And, you know, from that call, I, I was just in awe of everyone. Like, we're all of like mind, like spirit, at the heart of making a difference in this world, even though we're going through some difficult times, was, was the priority. You know, a couple of authors were like, we want to make sure we're not monetizing on this, right? Yeah. And I said, we're not, not a penny, not a penny. I'm not keeping a penny of anything. What I've donated towards getting it put together is my contribution. But I thought it was really neat that this book has pulled like-minded people together and that when it gets released, it's all of our intention that it's going to help or inspire even just one person. Yeah. I have to tell you, I reached out to the organization that I want to contribute to, and they were wildly excited about it, and they wanted to get a copy of the book, and I think they were quite touched that we would think and extend that offer to them. I'm excited. 
And, and that's the other piece, you know, like I've shared with all of you, you know, I'm extremely grateful, humbled that you're all giving a chapter, giving your story, being vulnerable. And, you know, I want you to be able to connect with people. I hope that the story that you wrote in the book will connect to somebody and somebody will say, you know what, Jesse, I want to get to know you. Or, you know, Dr. Uh, Judge Cray, like, I want to get to know you. Or like that they will have a connection to somebody who's going through something that, or went through something that they're going through. So that's my gift to everybody else that we just, this, this book becomes something that's big and touches lives and changes lives. And for my audience who, who's been following me along forever long, I had somebody message me the other day and they said, you have literally thousands of videos online. How the hell am I supposed to watch them all? And I said, yeah. I said, I know I've gone a little overboard with it, but for my audience who's, who's stuck with me all these years and watched probably thousands of hours in my stuff and read thousands of hours worth, I made it a point to add some things in this book that I've never shared before publicly in any sort of form to make it unique. So that it was something that if you were going to choose to support it, whether it's a download or whether you're, you're purchasing a book so the proceeds go to a charity, that you would get something new. In addition to not just from me, but there will be all the other authors and the learnings you can get from them. And I, I should say this too, knowing a couple of the authors and also having read other books by some of the other contributors, there's some phenomenal people. And I was, when Anne Marie reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to be a part of it, I was so deeply honored. and and felt so touched that she would consider me to be in that company because each of them who I've known or followed along before has inspired and touched my life personally and professionally in many ways over the years. And I, I truly hope that this will do the same in, of all of you. So again, it's going to be a really incredible book that it's going to be out. And then, Henry, what are we talking about for publication date? Where can we, is there going to be a pre-order? What's the yes. logistic pieces with that? We should probably talk about that. So we're looking at early September launch. Okay. We'll make sure to post that. Um, we're going to make the um, uh, uh, soft cover book available um, as well as the free ebook link um, on our websites. So everybody, every author will have a link to be able to share with their um, audience, if you would. Um, we, uh, we have a trailer that we're working on. So kind oh, of awesome. a little bit of a, a movie trailer to give you an idea of, of what we're trying to do. And, and the beauty of this book is no author is the same. We have, we have, um, and, and it's by intention. I wanted um, people of different backgrounds, of different levels of education, of different, um, you know, purpose uh, to be there so that a housewife could relate to another housewife. Um, a professional male could relate to another professional male. Uh, uh, a student could connect um, with yeah. something that they hear. So. It, it was just, I think we put on there from uh, uh, best-selling authors to ordinary people uh, because I, I want it to reach as many as we can. And I want it to, I want the audience to know that we really thought long and hard about every person that might be going through something similar and that you could do these simple daily habits um, to transform your life and those that you touch. Yeah. And we'll make sure we have all the links are going to be everywhere. We'll keep them posted here in the show notes on the pages. We'll update them as they come along. And I think that's an important point to draw to is this is a book. You did such a great job of assembling this group of people who has all this. So we can, we can use it as an individual reference where you can just flip to the author who, who, best reflects or represents who you are, where you are, what you're going through. You can only read that one person's story. You could read through all of them. You could, you could read it in a way of looking at where are you at right now? And then you could start to identify who's going to be the next step, the next step, the next step, the next step from that. 
I, it's a book that I think too, we, we mentioned earlier, you can grow with it too, because of the varied experience of each author, because of the varied backgrounds that there's really just such a, a wonderful, you know, it's kind of going to be like a, a desktop uh, encyclopedia or reference book for, for really living an incredible life. Yeah. And, and for, you know, other professional women like myself, I mean, pre COVID, I, I was just moving like a machine, constant go, go, go. Um, my mind was always, always going. And what am I doing here? What am I doing there? And raising children and, um, and you'll read through my story that for somebody like me to not have a wake up time right now, not have a bedtime. No, I mean, I'm, I'm working from home, but this has been a pause for me and for other women to see what is it that I did to enjoy this pause. Um, you know, I'm enjoying baking, cooking, mm things that I never had time for before and enjoying conversations with my family and really just enjoying this. It, it has taught me to be in the moment. And when you're, when you're running several companies at one time and then it comes to a screeching halt, I, I compare it to, you know, driving my Porsche at a hundred miles an hour and coming to a complete stop and not being able to go anywhere. It's like, okay, now what do I do? Um, but, but I thoroughly have taken advantage of this hmm. and the pause that I've been blessed to enjoy. I mean, I'm curious, who, who is your, is your story? And I'm not, I don't want to single people out because I think the stories are interchangeable for everybody. But when you, when you wrote your story, is there, is there an underlying message or a, something, a takeaway you would love for the readers of your specific story to take away from it? Yes. Um, you know, happiness is a choice. Um, attitude is a choice. Uh, Viktor Frankl in his book, Man's Search for Meaning said, and I've, I learned this 20 some years ago and I've never forgot it, that there's things that happen to you that are totally out of your control. And then there's consequences to those things. But in the middle is totally your control. And that is how you react to it. So this you have no control over. This you have, you have total control dependent on how you react. So the message is I could be so upset about COVID I could be mad at the governor, mad at the president. For what? If I choose how to react, it could benefit me more so than anything else. That is what makes me happy. I get to choose how I react. So if I look at this whole difficult time that we're going through and think, boy, you know, I get the opportunity to be with my husband and my kids. Hmm. I get to deliver food to people who will never, ever know me. I get to um, enjoy, I, I have a lot of animals. I get to enjoy my animals. Um, I have chickens, you know, we live on a nice big piece of property. I have 12 chickens. Do you know every morning when I open that front door, the 12 of them are sitting there waiting, like, are you gonna feed me? I give them worms, these freeze dried worms. But back in the day when I was busy, I had no clue how many chickens we had, uh -huh. but now I know we have 12 and I know that those little gals and a couple of roosters, they're so happy. And it's almost like they do this happy dance. They're clucking away and happy and I give them their worms and I'm, I'm like the best thing. I would have missed okay. out on that. So my message is choose to react in a way that is going to fill your soul, that is going to enhance your happiness, that is going to fulfill your purpose in life. Make that choice, because when you make that choice, that's the crazy, amazing life. The 
book is How to Be Crazy Amazing Through Challenging Times. We're looking at early September. All the links, everything will be available here in the show notes on Facebook. If for some reason it hasn't been completely updated, just message me. I will get it all to you. We're super excited to share this. And Marie, this has been such a blessing spending this time with you again. And I so thank you for being a, I feel like every time I get to spend some time with you, I'm inspired deeply. And I feel like you're such a, a beautiful, bright light for a generation compassionate art. And the thing that I've learned to really love and appreciate about you is that the more we look to give, the more it really enriches our life. And Absolutely. I'm, yeah, I'm just, I'm so thankful that you let me be a part of this and I'm excited to share this with everyone and, and yeah, crazy, amazing through difficult times will be piecemeal posted and really excited to provide this to you all. And please, if you would be open to sharing it with us or helping us share it and get it out there, pass it on to friends and family. Again, there's a free version and a vision. If you want to get a physical copy, all the proceeds are going to go to charity. This is just really about giving and supporting all of you. Yes. So thank you. Cause I'm blessed one. I'm surrounded by these phenomenal, crazy, amazing authors. And I just can't wait to see the impact this book has. Yeah, me too. All right, everybody. We will see you next time on another edition of Handful of Hope. And we look forward to you picking up the book and hearing your experience yes. with it. And yes. thank you so very much. And thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.